so much missing, there was so much need for more information that wasn't available that any other situation would have been automatically occurring that the drug would be disqualified from further analysis until that data is brought for us to evaluation, for evaluation. Dr. Yitzhak. Dr. Brooke headed the 11-person FDA AZT Advisory Committee. Dr. Brooke believed that the study was flawed then and now, but the majority of the panel pushed AZT through. The opportunity was lost that day because we had no way of scrutinizing the data, learning about side effect, and it was at the mercy of the drug company they wanted to cash in, cash in quickly before other competition would come in. They wanted to capture the market, and the market was eager for a drug. So it was a perfect combination. I felt we compromised science and we compromised safety when we approved the drug when we did. Dr. David Berry headed the study to approve AZT. Berry arranged for all the clinical virologists in the study of AZT to be doctors used in earlier welcome drug trials. They were the best money could buy. Very proud of those studies. I'm proud of the patients and I'm proud of the academic investigators who had to do an awful lot of work dealing with a very, very devastating and lethal disease under very difficult conditions. Yes, that is good science. Barry and Burroughs Welcome claimed in public they knew what the toxicities were of AZT, but the product label provided with the drug stated that the longer term safety was not known. Under the positive benefits flyer, Burroughs Welcome claimed that if AZT was used before symptoms appeared, AZT could extend the symptom free period. But the product label from Burroughs Welcome stated that the safety of the drug was not known particularly in patients with less advanced disease. I'm very proud of those studies. I'm proud of the patients and I'm proud of the academic investigators who had to do an awful lot of work dealing with a very, very devastating and lethal disease under very difficult conditions. And we still don't have uh, all the answers uh, about uh, AZ, uh, even today. Um, but uh, the riskiest thing, that I think, when we're dealing with a disease I mean, as terrible as AIDS, is to be unwilling. Uh, to so with Barry's misrepresentation of the product label, a flawed study, and the FDA ready to risk people's lives, they gave an eager population the drug they had demanded. Uh, the, the drug was uh, approved under very shady circumstances, and a tremendous amount of money is riding on it. Always welcome. Doctor drinking their own whiskey, as we used to say. Uh, you know, the human mind is a very inventive organ, and particularly when it's lubricated by money. Uh, uh, there's almost no, 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 no argument that a bunch of smart guys can't support, given a little time, ingenuity, and resources. AZT is not the answer. Uh, in dealing uh, with AIDS. AZT is not in, in treating uh, AIDS. Uh, and to say otherwise uh, would be misled also. The government was pushing the concept that early treatment was likely to have a survival benefit, which they had as yet not shown. The study that Dr. Hamilton did on AZT had a much different conclusion than Dr. Berry's did. Once they got AIDS, in comparison to the group who uh, received AZT later, it progressed more rapidly to death. Did Burroughs Welcome include Dr. Hamilton's study information in the package insert? No. In fact, they told Dr. Hamilton first to stop the study and then keep the results quiet. Welcome was also contacting doctors across America, warning them about Dr. Hamilton's study. I certainly didn't tell them to be quiet. No one I know told him to be quiet. 
In 1992, sales of AZT reached $400 million, but in a blow to the company, Dr. Hamilton's study was bolstered by the largest study to date. The study found taking AZT early did not prolong life. So if Burroughs Welcome had misrepresented the benefits of taking the drug early, what did the FDA say to their claim that AZT had no life-threatening toxicities? So each individual point is important. No, it seems quite convenient that these people are dying after four years. It's, you're probably not going to get a heck of a lot of, of well, that's, that's information. That's very difficult to study, Steve. You have people that are dying all the time from this stuff, and you wonder exactly what contribution the drug has as opposed to, you know, the safety part of it. Is it contributing? Is it not? Those are real questions we have to address in the labeling. So does the, does the FDA believe that there are life-threatening toxicities associated with AZT? Of course. And a lot of other drugs. Maybe... <laughs> Then how is of the drugs on the market have something that in some situations may be life-threatening to the patient? That's the nature of these drugs. Then how did the FDA allow them to print that, and I quote, there are no life-threatening toxicity, toxicities associated with AZT? I can't answer that. I don't know in what context it is. I don't know who printed it. I don't know who it's It's right from Burroughs Welcome. It's right out of their well, package we material. Burroughs Welcome. We, we have our own, uh, our own labeling process. Uh, Linda Dawson, can I help you? Yes, this is Steve Nagel from Minnesota, and I'm calling back again. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, did you have any information for me? Um, the only information I've found, it, there's a chapter of a book that I think you might find useful called The Eighth Knowledge Base. Mm -hmm. It's a textbook on HIV disease from UCSF. Um, and they give some guidelines, but they say you don't start retrovir at any particular CDC or CD4 cell count, anything um, meeting the CDC diagnosis criteria for AIDS in children would be reason enough to uh, initiate therapy. So you don't wait for a particular, you know, like in an adult you wait for 500, a CD4 count of 500 or less before you initiate treatment. Anyone diagnosed with, with HIV disease or AIDS would start, initiate therapy. On which, on which drug? Retrovir. <laughs> this wasn't on TMP SMX. I haven't looked in the package insert yet. I'm looking. Pardon? I have not looked in the package insert as of yet. I'm looking in the page and all these days. I guess I'm a, uh, a little bit more concerned about what, uh, what your company would uh, cite here. There's, I'm saying there is no CD4 count at which you start therapy like like there would be an adult at a 500. If you diagnose a child with AIDS or HIV infection. Well, it says here abnormal laboratory values. Okay. Isn't that wouldn't that include the CD4 CD8 count? It might be abnormal, but it's not. It might be a lower level than normal, but it wouldn't necessarily. There's not. It doesn't give a a number. In adults, 500 is that number. There is no number for pediatrics.